Welcome to Calculus. You will master complex problems, but forget how to add. On this episode, Stevenson will demonstrate We've been focusing so much on the derivative. Now, let's go in the reverse. So the need to calculate instantaneous rates of change led to the idea and discovery of slopes of tangent lines, which led to the derivative, which we've been studying for months now. And it's typically called differential calculus. But the derivatives is only half of kind of the study of calculus. And when you look at derivatives and you wonder, okay, there's rates of change, the question then becomes, well, how can these rates of change accumulate over time? And thus, now we get to what we're gonna show you today. Suppose you were to drive at a rate of 50 miles per hour for two hours. How far did you travel? Don't hurt yourself. I know, this is pretty straightforward. We could use a coordinate plane and basic geometry to illustrate the problem. Now, I know what you're thinking. Stevenson, why would we even do that? I know what the answer is. It's just 100, 100 miles. That's easy. I want to use this example, though, to illustrate how we can use geometry in a coordinate plane and illustrate this idea of accumulation of rate of change. So, you know, I like to start with something simple to get the idea across, and then we expand on to something more complicated. So here's a coordinate plane. We would have speed in terms of miles per hour on the vertical axis. Time and hours would be our horizontal axis. And this is the graph of driving at a constant rate. Notice it's horizontal. Makes sense. It's constant. And time would be zero at the origin there. So time is going from zero to two hours because you're asked to find the rate for zero to two hours or for the first two hours, right? Okay. So look at the geometric shape here. We have a rectangle, something we're very familiar with. If we can figure out the dimensions of this rectangle and calculate its area, it'll give us the same answer that we already know, which is how far did we travel? 100 miles. So check this out. In order to find area of a rectangle, we need two dimensions, right? Let's start with the base. Well, the base is the change in time. It started at zero and went to two. So delta t, remember delta means change or difference. Um, so it, you subtract the difference and you figure out it's two. Now, what's the height of your rectangle? Well, it's constant, it's just 50. Now, if you multiply those two together, you get distance traveled. Notice the hours units actually simplify to one. So you have two hours over one times 50 miles per one hour gives you 100 miles, which is the answer we already knew. But we were able to show this in an illustrated way. And notice what we did here is we found the area under a rate function. Okay, which was in this case constant. Let's look at another example. Suppose it began to rain. Ah, oh, love the rain. For the first hour, the rainfall increases at a steady rate from zero to 1.5 inches per hour. So let's get our graph going here. So the vertical axis is gonna be rain and the input or horizontal axis is time. So here's the first part. So the first hour the rain falls and is increasing at that steady rate from zero to 1.5 inches. So you can see it's a constant, and that's what they mean by steady rate, so it's linear. Now, the rain continues at 1.5 inches per hour for the next two hours. Well, that means it's constant for two hours, so there you go. And finally, the rain decreases at a steady rate for 30 minutes until it stops. So again, steady rate is another way of saying constant rate, and for 30 minutes until it stops. So there's the red line segment. So what is the total amount of rainfall from the storm? Now you're probably thinking, well, we can just multiply each part, the blue, the green, and the red, and then get our answer. Well, let's apply geometry here. If you look at the geometry, we have a trapezoid. So we could find the area of this entire trapezoid and the area under all of those rate functions would give us the total accumulation of rainfall from the storm. An easier way would be to look at this as three objects objects that or figures that we're more comfortable with say a triangle and a rectangle so let's look at this the blue triangle so remember the area of a triangle one half base times height so you have one half times the base which is one hour times the height which is 1.5 inches per hour notice again in hours simplify and you're left with inches 
So in that first hour, about three quarters uh, or 0 0.75 inches uh, come down from the storm. Let's look at the green part. Well, that's a rectangle. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? So that's two hours because it goes from one to three and its height was constant, 1.5. You multiply those, you get three inches. So now we have 0 0.57 inches plus three inches. And let's do the red part, which is the last one here. Now we have one half base times height. So we have 0 0.5 times 1.5 and we get 0 0.375, of course, because you have the half out front. Now that's in each time interval. We would add all of that up and we would get the total amount of rainfall, which is 4.125 inches. So here's the big idea that I want you to take away from this. We are so used to calculating rates at time, moments in time, we can actually use those rate functions in a different way. We can use the area under the curve of a rate function, and it'll give us the output over a time interval. So whatever that rate function is, the area under it with respect to the x-axis, that's important to note, over your time interval, Okay, will give you the total output, the total accumulation of something. So you've seen two examples now. One was distance, the other one was rain. But these sort of output questions can be any context. It could be how many copies does the copier make? Um, how much grains of sands has been pumped out of the machine? Um, it can be how many people have entered or left a building. So the total output is the total result you're looking for.